Hello, my name is Arthur, and in this video we're going to give some script to our enemy character. So, um, let's see, first off we're going to set his walk animation to auto start. That way it will be playing as soon as he's on the, in the game. We'll open up a script. Let's see, we're going to need gravity. Gravity equals 450, which is what we used for the player. We're going to need velocity equals vector 2 var walk speed um, we're gonna set him to be a little slower than the player so we'll put that at 100 and then we're gonna need a direction var direction and that would start at minus one because he's going backwards Okay, so let's see function physics process delta velocity dot y um, plus equals gravity times delta then um, if is on wall oops if is on wall direction times equals minus one and scale dot x times equals minus one and what scale.x is going to do is um, when we take the kinematic body and because of the nature of his animations we can't just flip things especially when when he has a ray cast or something else that goes on either side of them like if we just flip them it's probably not going to work but if we're to take his transform and if we scaled him x minus one what happens is he turns around so if he has a ray cast or anything that's on one side of him or the other it will turn around with it whereas Otherwise, the only things that will turn we can turn around is flip horizontally on the sprites. And that's probably not going to play out to be reliable. So we're going to use scale to turn him back and forth. Especially considering he'll probably need a ray cast to decide to shoot his fire. So that's what scale times minus one will do. <clears throat> And then we really just got to get them moving here. Velocity equals move and slide. Move and slide. Um, vector 2. Walk speed. Times direction. Comma. Velocity dot y um, comma vector two dot up comma false comma um, four comma pi divided by four comma false and 
Yeah, that will turn off. Um, he won't be able to collide with blocks or move them around. He shouldn't be able to anyways, but... We'll write in the whole, the whole thing for the move and slide command. And that helps me myself to be able to learn them as well. So we have the motion, which is the vector 2. This is the floor normal. So it's saying that up is up and the floor is down. Faults is um, stop on slope. So I think this means that he will slide down a slope if he was to be stopped on a slope. Gravity might pull him down the slope. Um, max slides. I think that's how many events that it remembers. So it's kind of like the size of the um, get slide count events. So there would be four events saved. I think that's what that means. PI4, that's pi divided by four, is the maximum slope that's considered floor and wall. And then faults is infinite inertia. So I think that this is enough to get him walking. So I've already added him into the level. And about all he should be able to do is walk back and forth. And if he hits a player, he should turn around, I think. So hopefully everything is working. He'll turn around at the block and he should just walk back and forth. So nothing is registering with him. When I land on his back, what should happen is he should die. So that would require a signal. Let's see how much time we have here. Okay, we're at seven minutes. That's pretty good. So let's see. Enemy damage zone. Body entered. Connect. We'll connect that. Then we would be if body dot is in group player um Function take damage Let's see game manager We're gonna receive body here Game manager dot score plus equals 100 body dot update HUD and here we'll go Take damage, we'll send it body, and here we will queue free. So he'll just disappear because we don't have any die animation set up. So at this point he should be able to die. So let's try that out and send points to the player for killing him. So we should be able to get score. So we can pick up a crystal that registers in the HUD. If we land on his back, he dies. We get 100 points. And yeah, that was probably a little too easy. So probably 
would be best to make it so it takes more than one hit that's why I called the function take damage and we would give them um, like when the player hits it and it's not going to die the player would bounce and then to make it difficult um, when the player bounces it wouldn't be like a jump where you can change directions on a bounce we would um, look to make a way that it can only bounce in the direction that it's facing so like if he lands on a character like that he would bounce off and be stuck in the direction that he's going so kind of an involuntary motion to make things so that the player doesn't have too much control and can't just bounce and re-land on top of on top of the enemy to kill it so make things a little more difficult so something along those lines and yeah I'll have to work that script out for the player so yeah it would be a way I'd be looking to zero velocity X while he's in a bounce so there would be variable um, is bouncing or something like that and if he's bouncing velocity X would become zero or velocity X would not be calculated by direction it would be calculated by the direction he was facing and the velocity he was traveling on X to get to the enemy unit something along those lines so I'll have to work that part out still to um, make sure that that killing the enemy has some challenge to it and we'll look at how to give him life and I think that it's probably time to look at at a life bar for the player and enemy units so that they're not all just one hit units so that'll be the kinds of things that I'm looking towards putting in now that we have an enemy that can deliver da or can take damage and soon he'll be able to deliver damage so we're gonna have to put something in for the players to receive damage um, yeah that'll be in the upcoming videos that's probably two or three videos so until then take care